Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today uh, I think this might prove to be one of our most popular videos. Um, very rare, as I've said before on the channel, only once or twice in two years that we get to show you uh, genius um, in, in play. Now, the World Puzzle Championship has just taken place in Germany, and uh, they did stream uh, some of the finals, uh, or the finals of the Grand Prix, which is basically a series of uh, matches between uh, individual competitors over puzzles and so um, we've actually got some footage of Ken Endo who is uh, well he's the world Sudoku champion he came second in the world puzzle championship which is absolutely terrifying to think uh, that there could be anyone faster than him uh, or better than him at solving puzzles and he also won the puzzle Grand Prix so he, ba he basically uh, won a lot and as I say, I'm going to show you at the end of this video him solving the puzzle that you can see on screen. Now it's a tapper puzzle. Now I did a video on how to solve tapper puzzles only a few days ago, so I'll put a card on the screen now for those of you who want to reflect fresh your memory. Now, more than I suppose most videos, I really, really recommend you have a go at this puzzle first. And as you're doing it, sort of work through the logic in your mind and get get a feel for how long you think it would be reasonable for a human being to take to come up, you know, to solve and to think through the processes that you're going through. Um, now, because I've seen Ken solve of this, um, I can't really solve it uh, live for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to talk you through Ken solve. So I've sort of learned Ken solve, if you like, and talk you through how what I think he was thinking at the various points. And then at the end of the video, you're going to see him do it. And how fast he was able to, you know, to make these logical deductions. And I, and I tell you this now, it it is even for somebody who's been to the world championship, um, represented their country, watching Ken solve this, it's like watching a different species. Um, the the speed of his thought is unbelievable to me, unbelievable. Um, yeah. So look look out for this. It is quite something. So anyway, let's 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 go. How would we do this? Um, well. Believe it or not, the first um, square that Ken fills in is this one. <laughs> not where I would have started, but um, Ken knows because of this 1-2 combination on the boundary here that this square has to be black. And the way I suppose we can check that is we can consider what happens if it's green. Well, if it's green, this square now can't be black because otherwise it will be isolated from the rest of the grid. And that only leaves three squares left. Now, Although 1 and 2 do add to 3, we obviously need the 1 and the 2 here to be separated by a green square. So you can't do that if you've only got 3 squares left. So Ken immediately writes in that. And then he moves down to the bottom of the grid and looks at this 1-3 combination. Obviously 1 and 3 have to be separated by at least one, uh, one cell. That gives us 1 plus 3 plus 1 cell is 5. There are exactly 5 cells around this this clue here. So actually you can write in all of you know all of those squares must be black. You don't know whether the extra black square is here or here yet, but we are that is absolutely forced. Now the next thing that Ken does is he looks at this square and he sees it's part of this four uh, clue here. Now the furthest this black square can extend therefore is either that way to this square or if it goes this way it will just reach this square. So this square here can never be black. And that immediately then allows Ken to look at this 113 combination. Now 1 plus 1 plus 3 that's 5, nothing terribly complicated there but because we know that each of these clues must be separated by a green square there must be 3 spaces around these black squares as well. So 3 plus 5 is 8 and there are exactly 8 squares around this clue. So once you know that this square is green you know that there cannot be another green square next to this square. Both of these squares are black. And in fact because these are all odd digits both of those squares are also forced to be black. Um, you can see that if we try and make this a green square, we're going to either have to have another green square or a two space here. And so that's that's just why all of those need to be black. 
then this three square it's either going to be like that or like that but either way or, or it can be like that but for sure this square is black now the next square is much harder um, in my opinion anyway um, and believe it or not it's this square now you may say well what, how, what can we tell about this square well clearly from this two clue this square can be green or black but ask let's ask ourselves the question what happens if it's green if it's green this square has to come down one but it's part of a two two clue so then that square would have to be green now this this two section here two black cells need to connect to the rest of the grid so obviously this would have to be black this would have to be black and this would have to be black so we'd end up with these squares all connected but now this four clue one two three four is complete so this square would have to be green and now there is a terminal problem with the puzzle because now all of these black squares are isolated so Ken appreciated all of this so his next cell highlighted was that one which was was a surprise to me but once I thought about it I could see how that was possible now you can't have a 2 by 2 black section in a tapper so that square then has to be green now the moment this is green this 3 clue becomes resolved that must be like that with this being green this must be green as well and this must be green because of the 113 clue uh, these two squares now have to be black because they have to connect to their friends and if we have a look at this this two clue here we have these therefore need a green square to separate them now uh, the next thing that's appreciated is that we need to put two more black squares around this two clue here the second two clue so they could be but they need to be able to escape from wherever we put them and the only way they can escape now because of the green cells in the grid is going to be along the bottom so in fact that forces just these squares to be black squares all of these squares on the bottom right are now completely green we cannot ever get to them because if we did we would make this clue a three and that's obviously not required so we now get here now again with this four clue we need to get this black space out. So with these two can't be black, that, that's going to isolate in the same way that we had a problem up here. So we're going to have to have a black square, a black square, and therefore these two squares are green. And so this black section is now coming up nicely. That allows us to put a green here. Now we have to extend this black section in order to reach some friends. And what was the next thing that Ken realized? Ah, yeah, so then we can put this. We've now completed the four uh, clue here. So again, this has to come up slightly. And we reach this position. Now, what next, you may well ask? Well, let's imagine this square was green. If this square is green, this black square can, can't get out anymore. It can go up one, but we don't have a, um, a two clue here, and that would make this a two clue, so it would have to go around the corner here. So this square is black. Now, obviously, if this comes up to make this four clue work, then this whole region is isolated, so it has to come out this way. And we reach this sort of position here. And then Ken switches and comes back over to this side of the grid because he looks at these one clues, realizes those two squares must therefore be green, instantly realizes this square cannot be black. And the reason this square can't be black is if I make it black, look now, we can't have a two by two black section, so that's how that's forced to be a green square because of the the ones here and now we've isolated a region again so very very clear thinking it means this square must be green we have to come up here now again there is 
uh, I suppose a real sort of meta appreciation of how the grid divides and, and the need to connect things. And this square must be green because other, uh, if it's black, because of the one clues, it would become immediately isolated. So how does this black area here connect to this black area, for example? The only way is if it's going to come over the top of the grid this way. So it must come that way. Now that this black, these black squares now must be part of the four clue here. Um, now also there's a nice bit of logic we can do with the ones. We've got to put two more ones into the open sections here. There's this square, this square, and this square three. So we obviously can't put two of the ones in these two squares. So this must be a black square. And once this is a black square, look what this does to the one and the four. Now I can't connect this. This can't be black because that would make a five here. So that's green. This black square needs to connect to friends, so it must come left. This now must be black in order to make this clue a four clue. And you can see now we're just going to be able to escape by making those two black. This is green because we avoid the two by two rule. And this is black because we need three single black squares around the 111. And we can enter in this one and this one as well. And we reach this position. So we're still following exactly Ken's logic. Um, and yeah, it's um, again another trick involving two by twos is the next spot. So this square, can this square be black? Now in theory it could be because of the three clue. This would make that three clue work. But then if we did make this black, this would have to be green and this would have to be green because we can't have a two by two section. And again, if we appreciate in fact, we can put a green square there anyway. This this that then this is then isolated, obviously. If these two squares are both green, this black area here is not, we cannot get it out. Ergo, this square is not a black square. So the only way of this black section escaping is to come vertically upwards like this. Um, and now if we look at this two and three clue, we've done the two bit, we need the three bit. So the three bit, you can see if we sort of examine how that could look. However we arrange it, both of these squares must be black. And instantly, you know both of these squares are black, you can do a bit of logic on this, on the double three clue. Because this, this is sort of always required to be symmetric. So once you do these two squares, these two squares must also be black. And it, you, again, you can prove that to yourself. If you try and make this square green, for example, there's simply no way now of putting two threes, two three clues around this. So these two squares are black. And we reach this position. And the next sort of meta bit of logic is that Ken realizes that this 122 clue effectively acts as a wall for this part of the grid. In the sense that we can't come up and out this way. That is impossible because that's going to require a three clue. So the only way that this black section can connect to this black section at the top is going to be if it somehow gets out either this way along here or, or this way along here. It definitely can't come upwards. And if we consider the two uh, ways that this three clue can work now, let's look at this way. That would be one possible configuration. But that, If that's right, that square is going to have to be green. This, These twos here mean that this is going to have to be green. And look what's forced. Now this has to come upwards to get out, but we've just shown, or we've just talked about the fact that to do that, that requires more than uh, two squares. We've got one, two, three there. So all of that means that the only configuration for threes that work is that one. Fill that in like this. Uh, now this three clue is complete, so that must be a green. 
we still need to put another 1 in this 1 4 clue so that's going to have to look like this we know now that this black area because it can't come up this way it's going to have to come up over the top this way now this square must be green and we reach this position do we I think and let me just check yep and now we can look at the 1 2 2 clue now obviously 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5 we know there must be a gap between each one that gives us 8 so in looking at this it's not possible for there to be two green squares connected to one another around this around these eight squares so this square therefore we can't have two green squares that's going to have to be black the moment that's black we've got to avoid a two by two this square must be black this square must be green this square must be black avoid the two by two problem therefore this square is black that we are able now to make the connection and we're just left with finishing off this one and the two here and the way that's going to have to work is like that so judging by what we had to do there all of the all of the lovely logic that we need it's a beautiful puzzle maybe not the hardest tap you've ever seen but certainly required thought it required a bit of judgment from um, in places make up your mind about how quickly you would expect somebody to solve that puzzle and we're going to have a look now at Ken solving it. Okay, so here you go. You can see in the top left-hand corner, that's Ken Endo's paper. They're getting ready to turn over. Okay, he turns over, and as, you, as I mentioned before, I mean, th I mean, it's very hard to even commentate this. It's going so quickly. Um, he's locking in the whole of the right side. He's got his rubber ready just in case. Doesn't seem to be needing it yet. He's got the trick over the top done already. He's figured out the right hand side. Uh, this is how quick you have to be to be, you know, one of the very, very top puzzlers in the world. And it is quite staggering to me watching this. Um, now I think there's going to be a brief hiatus here where the video actually goes wrong on the um, on the web feed. Um, but you'll see that we we don't miss very much. He comes back and he basically he's he's all but finished at this point anyway you can see just tidied up the left hand side tidies up top left and he's done clarify something in the bottom right there just to make sure that his paper couldn't be marked wrong and in a moment you'll see he shows the time 57 seconds um, now I'm going to leave this playing now because this is now Hideaki Joe's now Hideaki started at the same time as Ken. You can see he, he's going at a much more, I mean, it's still a prodigious pace, but it's a little bit more understandable. And Hideaki's notation is very, very uh, easy to follow. Um, so it's a little bit clearer exactly what he's penciling in. Um, and the solution path is, is similar for all these guys, but it's just done with such precision. It's quite beautiful to watch. Hideaki was obviously one of the wonderful competitors on Nickelly before that site unfortunately defunct a year or so ago. Um, and you can see here why he was, you know, a regular winner. And there we go. So that is how good you have to be to uh, uh, to compete at the top level of puzzling. I hope that was entertaining for you guys. Um, perhaps a bit daunting too. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.